Okay, Lesson 72 is going to be Part 2 of the Great Canadian Character Anthology Story by Hubert Bach, titled He Also Ran and Ran and Ran and Ran, about the first five years of my Fix the Bank mission, my Abolish Interest Rates mission. Part 2 of Hubert Bach's story. The first time he ran in an election in 1979, he says he ran on a platform that called for legalized gambling. I figured they ought to have something better to do than chase gamblers, especially when I wanted to legalize the industry. That was mainly the thrust of my campaign when I decided to run. The combination of gambling and politics turned out to be the catalyst for the vision that struck him six years ago at the age of 28. The vision was a variation of the old social credit doctrine of Major C. H. Douglas, which he had first heard of at the knee of his grandfather, Adelard Turmel, who had stumped with Réal Cahuet in northern Quebec during the 1930s. The vision was that the world would be right if the banking system worked on the same principle as a casino bank. Interest free. It's so difficult for people to believe that you can run it as simple as a casino bank because it would be an admission that they've been conned, that they've been ripped off, he says. If you understand a casino bank that doesn't inflate, then maybe you understand how. One of the few things that most fringe candidates have in common is that they tend to subscribe to a grand universal scheme that would transform society. Yeah, my unilets. I was right all the way. A system so simple that everyone should be able to grasp it. Yeah, poker chips backed up by time. But that it is never implemented because it is opposed by powerful vested interest groups. Yeah, the banks who want to keep people poor so they can stay rich. And because people would feel foolish once its basic simplicity became clear. Imagine, Daddy and Mommy tried all their lives to pay 11 when the banks only printed 10. Har, har, har. What sets Termal apart is that few people have the massive ego to pursue their ideal with quite the intensity he shows. He's distilled his system into a complex algebraic formula. I over P plus I isn't complex. And his modus operandi between elections is to collar economists and other bank types as they emerge from the Bank of Canada and give them odds of 10,000 to 1 that they can't disprove his formula, proving that interest, zero interest, has no inflation on the chips. So far, he says, none of them has taken his money. They used to stop and try to debate with him, but they don't anymore. It's just too unbelievable to believe that you could run it like a poker game. You've got collateral, they got chips, no interest, no inflation. At the end of the game, the chips buy back exactly what the collateral was. Unquote. The economists, of course, think Termel is a nutcase as do many people who've been exposed to his high-octane rhetoric. They try to make their points with him, then walk away shaking their heads under a barrage of Termel's insistent, speedy rap that makes no concessions to the sacred cows of contemporary economic talk. He is, of course, convinced he's a genius. My claim to fame, he says, is that if Einstein made it big algebraically, linking energy and mass accurately... I claim I've made it bigger by algebraically linking interest and inflation because it's a far more relevant problem to society's misery. I equals zero means inflation equals zero. They don't know that yet. Now, who's going to counter that by quoting him John Maynard Keynes or Milton Friedman? These are economists who all got it wrong, and I'd tear them apart in a debate. J. Walter Schneider, the Carlton professor who hired Termel as teaching assistant for the gambling course, recalled with understatement that he found his protege somewhat rigid in the same thing. Sometimes he gets things simple wrong, and sometimes he grasps sophisticated ideas very quickly, but either way, he's stubborn about it. He went from totally apolitical to running for everything. One day, his interest in interest rates was non-existent. The next day, it was the single motivating factor in his life. Unquote. True. One day, I had no idea the threat of usury to me and my planet. And by the next day, I knew that it was my duty as the only engineer specialized in computers and gambling to take on the malfunction and the genocidal death gamble computerized system. So, Termel doesn't only blow his own horn, he advises others how to use his guerrilla court tactics 
to stall bank foreclosures by tying up their cases in the judicial mill. If a criminal can stall, stall, stall by appealing, 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 why can't a poor person stall the same way? My stiff debate kits. Gene Metcalf of Smith Falls in Ottawa Valley Town is one person who doesn't think John Turmel is a nutcase. Metcalf, who suffers from severe allergies, was ordered to vacate her property by the Bank of Montreal a few years ago for non-payment of rent, despite her pleas that she could not survive in the outside world. John offered his help, she said. Now he keeps me here by appealing the eviction notices. He comes and goes with me to court because I'm not able, and he doesn't charge me anything. He really cares. George Bothwell is a farmer from Owen Sound who got the same kind of help from Turmel. His method will buy you a lot of time if nothing else. He says, I don't think he's a nut, a little egotistical, maybe even a lot. But what he says has a lot of merit. Besides playing blackjack and politics, Turmel also plays accordion. Ultimately, his three-week jail term in 81 was changed to 100 hours of community service, which he performed by playing accordion in all folks' homes. The 100 hours has since been put in, but he still plays for the Golden Agers. They kept calling, he says, and how do you say no? And in 1993, with the big casino bust, I got 200 hours of accordion service. And in 2003, with the big marijuana bust on Parliament Hill, I got another 100 hours community service playing my accordion. So my accordion saved me from jail three times. He even got a kind word from Ottawa's mayor, Marion Dewar, against whom he ran in the 1980 municipal election. You have to face the fact there's nothing you can do to stop them, she said, when asked about the nuisance factor posed by fringe candidates like Turmel. It's a small price to pay for living in a democracy. Besides, he has a great sense of humor, and one-on-one -on -one he's very good. Turmel himself is only slightly put out by those who call him crazy. I hear it said behind my back, he says, and I hear the odd media treat me that way, but I don't mind looking like an eccentric who is unassailable on his theory. Hey, I put up the cash, flash the cash, bye-bye trash. Unassailable on my theory. I've been brutalized, but I'm tough. Okay, I've taken a few lickings, but I want to fight the system. This way I'm doing good. I believe I'm doing good. He's even been victimized by imposters. During the 1980 municipal election, it was duly reported in the local papers that John Trammell had added a new plank to his platform calling for the legalization of bigamy to protect children from marriage breakdown. This way, if a wife decides to leave, he was quoted as saying, she'll still have visiting rights and the child will still have a family to live with. Well, I don't know where that came from. Even though I'm against monogamy because it's an unnatural state for humanity to be in, I didn't say this stuff. Turmel had to deny this vigorously the next day. The papers in their own defense say they were easily misled by the prankster because they figured it was the kind of thing John Turmel would naturally come out with. Talk about fighting banks and that's what they figure you mean, eh? Not this, not all the brickbats, not his 19 consecutive election losses have in any way deterred Turmel. For a political free spirit, this looks like a perfect day. It's sunny outside, perfect weather for picketing the Bank of Canada. He's got his envelope full of winnings from Atlantic City, and he's at work on a private, no-interest system of cashing people's welfare checks that would undermine companies that do it for profit. My foster merchant program. Tell you about it some other day. He's also plotting to take over what's left of the Federal Social Credit Party to avenge the indignity a few years ago when they kicked him out. I like to think I'm the fourth force in Canadian politics, he says cheerfully. There's the Grits, the Tories, and the NDP, and there's me, and then there's all the others.